I bought over 60 feet of ladder for this tree stand. So this is a tree stand I'm gonna be sitting in when I'm up in the tree. And way down there, all that ladder is how far I'm gonna have to climb up here. This is gonna be really scary. I could actually die in this video. That's the tree I'm gonna be putting the tree stand on. It's the tallest, straightest tree I could find. So let's get building this thing. I'm considering scrapping this video. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. So I got the first ladder up. This is the height of a normal person's tree stand, 20 feet tall. And I still have all this to put up. There's no way I'm gonna keep climbing up the tree stand like I did with that one, cause that's just not possible. So I came up with a slightly less dangerous plan. I went and got one of those ladder tree stands so that way I won't have to hold onto the ladder while I'm putting up the other ladders. So it's the next day, day number two of building the tree stand. Yesterday I was able to get 40 feet of ladder up there. The top of the ladder is right there, about five feet above the tree stand. We're about two thirds of the way done. I still have all of this to go, 24 feet left of this. Uh, these are a lot smaller sections, so hopefully that'll be easier to put them up than these ones. These ones are a lot bigger, a lot longer. So by the time this is done, it's probably going to be way up there in those branches. This is going to be crazy. So I'm going to get back to work. Hopefully I can finish all the ladders today. I don't know if I actually have to say this or not, but do not try this at home unless you have like some sort of climbing gear, because this is seriously like the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life. It's really scary, and I'm scared of heights, so that doesn't help either. So I'm going to continue continue putting this ladder up. I'll just time lapse right now. All right, guys, I did it, finally. Not really, but we're almost done. I finally got all the ladders up there. Oh my gosh, do you see the very last one right there? I actually still have three more ladders left, but I don't need them. I can't, like, I can't, even, I can't even put them up there if I wanted to. I'm actually gonna put the tree stand up there tomorrow because I'm just ready to call today. I'm tired from doing this. Like, this is literally takes me all day almost. I'm starting to get used to being up that high. Usually when I get down, my knees are just, like, shaking a bunch, and I'm, like, super scared. But this time, I wasn't as bad, so... That's good. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we put the tree stand up. So it's the next day and here's how I'm gonna get the tree stand up there. I'm just gonna tie the string I used for the ladders to the tree stand, climb up to the top, then start pulling the tree stand up. And once I get it to the top, I guess we'll just go from there. Look how high this is. This is so stupid. And right, I'm gonna get the strapping this on the tree. Hopefully I don't die. Okay, right about there looks pretty good. Go ahead and tighten it down. Hope my tripod don't break when I drop this. Ooh. I should probably go sit up in the tree stand right now because I just got it done. Look how high I am and this is how this is what I've been doing every time. I get the tree stand down so I have room to climb over it and then I just climb over it onto the ladders 60 feet up in the air. Oh my gosh. Okay now I just start climbing. Oh my gosh man. My hands are sweaty too. I'm sitting on the 60 foot tree stand. This has got to be the scariest thing I've ever done. Oh my goodness. If this video doesn't get views, I'm going to quit YouTube. I brought my rangefinder up here so I can get a confirmed measurement. 20 yards exactly, so 60 feet. Okay, I need to get down. This is the worst thing ever because I'm not even wearing a tree harness right now. This is so stupid. So now that we got the world's highest tree stain set up in the tree, we gotta be getting ready for deer season. Wait, I don't, what, wait, wait what's the date? It's September 19th. Deer season starts in like 11 days. So I got a bunch of these packages from Walmart. I have no idea what's inside of these. Hopefully something to help me kill a deer. I'm gonna open all these up real quick. I'll show you what I, what I think is in these boxes. Uh, tree stain harness so I don't fall and die. Probably would have been a good idea to have this before I started. The next box, a trail camera, and this deer mineral thing block salt block. This one's super heavy. Ugh. This bow target. I actually bought that bow target for this crossbow. I just got this today, just for this video. This is some liquid minerals for deer, and I got this food plot seed so we can plant a little food plot. Final box. This bag of corn, and that's all. Now that I have everything I need to catch a deer, I mean kill deer, not catch a deer, we are gonna be setting this up. Enjoy this epic montage of me setting up my deer's hunting stuff, food plots and that. So we just got one more thing to do. 
turn on the trail camera. All right, let's turn that thing on and close it up. And I guess I'll see you guys on the first day of deer season. What if we get a deer the first day? That'd be crazy. All right, I'll see you then. All right, y'all, so it's opening day. We're hunting on a nice, cool looking, foggy morning. It's actually shooting light already. Probably should have been out here like an, a half hour ago. I wanted to have enough light so I could climb up my tree stand and not worry about not seeing the ladders. Range finder and my crossbow. I only parked my truck like 150 yards away from my tree stand, so all the deer in this area probably heard me drive up. No, I probably should have parked further away. There's my corn pile. Put out some more corn and another mineral block. There's my trail camera. Let's see if my trail camera... Oh, it just went off. All right, we made it to the tree stand. I got a string to tie my crossbow to to pull it up. Okay, I'm safe. If I fall, I'm not gonna die. If the string breaks or I would drop it, the steer hunt's over. Now the, now it's pointing right at me. Oh my gosh. When I say my tree stands in the top of the trees, I'm not joking. Like the tops of the trees are right there. I can see everything. The fog's blocking a lot of it, but like I can see miles out there. It doesn't look that high on camera, but this is 60 feet up in the air. I'm not even wearing camo. I just wore this sweatshirt and these jeans. Oh my gosh, look, a squirrel. A couple of days ago, I did check that trail camera down there. All I got were does and fawns. Zero bucks. So what I'm going after today is either a big buck, a doe, or maybe a fawn. No, 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 I'll just get a doe. But if a doe comes in with fawns, I'll still shoot the doe. I don't care. So last time I was hunting, I didn't even see a single deer. But I was wondering what it'd be like deer hunting there with little to no leaves on the trees. You could probably see everything. So it's November 7th today, and as you can see, there's like hardly any leaves up in the trees. You can see like miles in every direction. That also means it's the rut. So the bucks are out chasing does all over the place right now. And you can actually call the deer in. Let me show you what I got in my little deer hunting backpack to help bring the big ones in. First up, it's this doe urine. Before I came walking over here I always spray some of this on my boots just leave a trail of scent over here hopefully the big bucks will smell that come running towards me just get the scent in the air a little bit next I got some antlers to rattle just trying to sound like some young bucks fighting I also got this mouth call right here maybe a big one will hear that and come running but yeah this is this is like my my rut time bag. <laughs> so hopefully a big buck come running in from one of those calls. Put an arrow right in his heart. I also did some research on what colors deer can see. Supposedly they can see blue pretty well, so <laughs> I wore these super bright blue pants. I'm so high up in the trees right now, I don't think the deer will even be able to see me. That's why I'm wearing these super bright, bright colors, because I want to see if they can see me. It's like 3.30 or 3.35, so I'm just going to see you guys whenever something comes out. Bro, I just turned the camera off. There's a little bug. He came in, I bet, from those rattling antlers. He's too small to shoot, though. Looks like he's just gonna keep walking that way. These squirrels down here are making so much noise, I keep thinking they're deer. Deer just coming running right over to me, but I look down, it's just the squirrels. It's just about prime time. That's when the wind stops and the sun's about ready to set and everything just gets really quiet. That's like when the big ones come out a lot of times, so hopefully one will come right over to me. Some two yearlings coming out to the mineral blocks, both too small to shoot. Buck, buck coming. He's limping over here. Is that a shooter? Might be a shooter. Oh, that's big. That's a pretty big buck. Looks like he's hurt pretty bad. He's not even able to walk on it. Gosh. I think I'm gonna take him if he comes any closer. smaller buck just scared him off a little bit. I can still see him down there. He's about 40 yards out, sitting in the brush. Okay guys, still zero deer so far, but we actually got a problem right now. I have competition deer hunting in this woods, which I already knew about. I know there's another guy that deer hunts here. I was gonna come hunting here yesterday morning, but on my way here, the guy was parked like less than 100 yards away from my tree stand. I was still gonna go hunting though. I walked over and the string to pull up my bow was like stuck up in the trees. So I couldn't even go deer hunting if I wanted to. I'm back out here today. I got some corn with me. I also dumped some corn out a few days ago and oh my gosh, the deer have destroyed this area. I had a pile of corn right there and there's no corn left. It's all just like, it looks like hogs were in here or something. 
enough. But anyways, that guy's back here uh, right now hunting. I'm trying to be a little bit quiet because I don't want to ruin his hunt. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm not really worried too much about it. Anyways, there's this car parked right there and my tree stand is literally like 50 yards right over there. I don't really know why he parks right by the woods because there's a lot of deer that bed in this area, which he's probably scaring a bunch of them, but that's good for me, I guess. <laughs> now let's check the trail camera. I put it out the same day as the corn. So I'm curious to see if there's any big bucks on here. Got 85 pictures. There's me. Oh, whoa, a buck. Not a big one though. Couple of does it looks like. And there's me today. We got no big bucks at all. Just because we got no big bucks on camera isn't a bad thing. They'll be out running around looking for does and I got a lot of does at the corn pile. Where there's does, I guess there should be bucks eventually. So I'll just see you guys the next hunt. Hopefully we can get a buck. All right y'all, it's about a week later. I took a little break. If there was any big bucks in the area, I wanted them to settle down a little bit from all my probably terrible calling. This is the I'm gonna kill something. I know it. I always say that though, and I, it's always wrong, but this time, no, I'm gonna kill something. Whether it's a big buck or doe, I don't know, but I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna shoot something. Got a couple deer coming in. That's a nice doe right there, I think. A couple younger ones with her too. Decent buck just came out. Pretty nice buck. I might take him if he comes out. Oh, they're fighting, oh my gosh. That buck did actually come in the range, but it got too dark out for my scope cam to be able to see anything, so I let the buck go. So I'm up here on the evening hunt of November 28th. I'm about 100% confident I'm gonna kill a deer. I don't really care. Oh my gosh, I just freaking missed that giant bug. What was I doing? He's still right there. He's like 50 yards away. I sighted my crossbow in at 30 yards. I was about a 45 yard shot. I thought that was where I was supposed to hold. No, I'm so stupid, man. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, he just walked away. Oh, that was like the biggest buck I've ever seen while hunting. Jeez, man. I'm shaking so bad. Well, I just went to look at my scope cam footage. The stupid GoPro turned off right before I took the shot. But yeah, I can see my arrow down there. I did miss the deer. It went right under his heart. Well, I'm, I guess I'm kind of glad I missed it now because, you know, you wouldn't have been able to see the shot. <coughs> All right, I'm heading out early tonight. I just didn't really feel like hunting anymore after what happened. And I wanted to check my arrow just to make sure I missed that deer. Here it is. Yeah, I missed them. Um, not a single drop of blood or hair anywhere. All right, guys, it's the next morning. You can probably barely see me right now. It's actually the third day of gun season, and I could have taken my shotgun out and shot that buck last night, but I didn't. My shotgun's right down here, and I'm going to be taking that instead of the crossbow. After missing that buck, I'm not very confident shooting the crossbow that high. I'm just going to start hunting with the gun for now on, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the height messing with the point of impact with the arrow. All right, I'll see you guys in the tree stand. Hopefully, I actually hit something today. Good grief noises, holy cow. Train and siren. It's pretty windy out this morning. You might be able to see the trees swaying back and forth. I'm just kind of up here just swaying back and forth like this. It's not really that scary, but you know, I got the harness on so I feel safe. Now we just need that buck to walk under my stand again and we'll be set. Hopefully something like that happens again. It's the limping buck. It's the limping buck. <laughs> the heck did I miss that? Did I just miss that deer? Still see him? Oh, I just dropped him. Oh my goodness. I just dropped him. How did I hit that? That was close to a hundred yards. I could barely see him in the brush. I don't even think you could see him on the shot cam. I was leaning all the way out here. Like I wasn't even holding on to anything 
and I was holding my gun in the center of my chest to take that shot because that tree that tree right there was right in the way of my shot oh my goodness I finally got one that same buck from earlier came back if he's ah, I got him oh my goodness how did I miss that shot from right there I was like 30 yards. I'm a terrible shot or something, or this angle is messing with my aim, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna sit up here for like five minutes and just relax so I can climb down safely and then we'll go take a look at him. Okay, I rewatched the footage of the first shot and I actually hit that branch. The shot looked lined up perfectly, but I hit that branch. I'm starting to second guess whether I dropped that deer or not because I could barely see. I could just see the outline of the deer when I shot. I think I saw him drop. I'm pretty sure I saw him drop, but I'm really hoping he dropped. Oh yeah, I see a rack sitting over there. Oh my gosh, he's right there. Oh goodness, he's still alive. He's still moving, he's breathing. I'm gonna have to put another shot in him. All right, guys, there it is, the giant buck. I don't think he's as big as the one I saw yesterday, but this is a pretty nice deer. Okay, let's check him out. Like that is a nice buck. He's bigger than I thought he was gonna be. The first time I saw him when he was limping, I actually considered letting him pass but he's actually a nice deer i guess being up that high makes him look a lot smaller because when there's does coming in earlier i had a hard time telling where they are either does or just fawns because they all look the same size to me up there that is pretty good that is a nice deer how many points is he one two three four five six seven eight nice mature eight pointer you can see he was just rubbing too look at all the bark on his antler i'm gonna flip him over i'll see where the first shot hit um gosh what the heck wait what i do not think i did that because there's a shot right there that was my follow-up shot to bring him down okay let's see why this deer was limping the deer was limping somewhere on up here on his front legs i don't see anything wrong though I mean, both his legs feel fine he is a nice buck if he was smaller i still would have shot him anyways because you know i didn't want to have a uh, injured buck running around here that's just not good all right got the tag thing filled out boom legal buck Thing's so heavy. Oh, gonna get the gut in this deer. Yes, I'm putting gloves on because I don't want to get blood on my hands because then I'll have to touch the cameras with blood. Other than that, I'm not a, a wimp. So, enjoy this time lapse of me gutting this deer. Getting this up here is gonna be a challenge, I think. Good thing I work out though. Oh, get in there! Skills. It's lifted a 500 pound deer by myself. We are going to do a catch and cook with this deer. I think I'm going to get it mounted too because that's kind of cool to shoot a giant buck out of the world's tallest tree stand. Okay, I got some of this ground up deer meat from the deer I shot. A lot of people in the comments tell me I don't know how to cook, so we're going to try and make this catch and cook taste good. We're going to make some tacos, some deer tacos. Olive oil. Is that good? No, more. Way more, 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 That's more. probably good. Does this go in first or not? After it's done? Read it. I always put seasoning in before. Put the seasoning in. You need a little bit of water too. Okay, first a burrito, sour cream, cheese, hot sauce. It tastes like normal tacos. I don't really know what else to say. But this is one of the best catch and cooks I've done probably all year. I'd give it a 7 out of 10.